You might already be familiar with TM Forum's fantastic work on defining the API standards for standard telco use cases. As you will notice recently, the Specmatic team has collaborated with TM Forum and built out async API specifications. If you go to the API directory, you will see quite a few of the uh, APIs now have uh, async tag over here for them. Let's quickly click through and get in. And here you should be able to switch to the asynchronous. And what you will see is the open API, the user guide, the conformance profile, CTK, others are already available. So let's look at uh, what is the thought process and the architecture behind building uh, these. Cool, so the objective of uh, building these asynchronous API is really for encouraging event-driven architecture, especially in telco kind of use cases where you expect very high volumes, uh, you know, having an event-driven architecture becomes extremely important from a scalability and reliability point of view. So keeping that in mind, uh, TM Forum has launched these async APIs. Uh, you are already familiar with REST and we provide, uh, TM Forum provides a lot of the REST APIs, but now we've also added support for eventing, uh, which allows us to essentially communicate uh, asynchronously. Uh, for, for this, we are leveraging the async API, which is an open source project and a community that is uh, helping us drive best practices around event-driven architecture. Async API itself is protocol agnostic, and as you can see, it supports several different protocols. Uh, at TM Forum, we have initially started with Kafka, but soon we'll cover other protocols like WebSockets, MQTT, and so on. Now, when it comes to asynchronous, you might be familiar with two patterns, right? The event, which is essentially uh, notifications uh, that are given and commands which could be uh, specific to, uh, you know, uh, operation that needs to be done, an instruction or an operation that needs to be performed asynchronously. Uh, and you'd be happy to know that uh, we've implemented both uh, events and commands. Uh, for events, we are using notifications and for commands, uh, we've basically taken the rest operations and mapped them to uh, specific commands in asynchronous pattern. How is that implemented? Let's quickly look at the uh, you know implementation. So what we've done is we've taken the request reply pattern and what you will see is there is a request topic for commands to be pushed uh, for commands to be pushed from the requester to the replier and then the replier can then asynchronously respond back on the reply channel and the response can be picked up. What we have done is we have taken the standard uh, five uh, get post put patch delete operations from HTTP REST and map them through asynchronous uh, you know commands and that's basically what you will see going forward is that each of these commands are essentially mapped to a uh, topic. Uh, so here, for example, if you see trouble ticket, uh, we have trouble ticket list. We have a create, we have a retrieve, uh, we have a patch, and we have a delete. Uh, so these all, each of these operations then have a command request topic and a command reply topic for the response. I hope this is kind of making sense. Now let's quickly switch gears and look at the architecture of the CTK and the RI. The CTK is the conformance toolkit and RI is the reference implementation for this. Uh, so the uh, CTK itself is dockerized and uh, the developer who is going to run the CTK would need to uh, change the uh, change me.json which can be mounted into the CTK. Uh, this basically points to where your Kafka broker is running. Uh, then they update the uh, payloads uh, that you know your reference implementation understands and again mount those into the docker. Uh, Specmatic itself is being used to power the CTK. Uh, so Specmatic will take the payloads and do uh, validate them against the async API specification and if everything looks good then the conformance test will get kicked off. The conformance test will basically publish uh, you know a command onto the command request topic 
and this would then get picked up by the consumer. Now, in our reference implementation, we provide all of this, including the Kafka broker, inside a Docker image. Uh, we also have a async API bridge, which basically picks up the message from the published topic. Uh, so the consumer will pick this up and then make a HTTP call to the standard HTTP reference implementation uh, that TMF already provides. And once uh, the response comes back, then the producer on the async API bridge would put the message on the command reply topic. And uh, of course that will get verified by Specmatic. So it will pull the message from the command reply topic and verify against the uh, AP uh, async API specification to make sure that the reply is uh, as per the schema uh, and so forth, right? Uh, the client also is capable of publishing notifications on the notification topic. And so the, you know, the, the notifications can also be verified by Specmatic now. And when all of this is done for all of the topics, uh, then essentially we generate a report. Now, while all of this is running, you may want to have observability in terms of what is going on. So uh, what we have done is we have built a set of uh, tools uh, as part of the reference implementation uh, for observability. So calf drop, for example, to see what's going on on Kafka. Uh, this is kind of uh, at a high level, the uh, implementation of the async uh, you know, API, CTK and RI. Let me quickly switch gears and show you uh, how this is implemented in the code, right? Uh, so if you were to download the uh, CTK and RI, what you will see is a folder like this, which basically contains the uh, async API specification. It has a uh, Docker uh, Compose, which is primarily the main thing. Uh, so here we are basically uh, running this thing, the CTK from uh, a Docker image. Uh, we are mounting uh, some volumes. And essentially the examples, these are the payloads that, uh, you know, one needs to update if required. And that's pretty much it. So if we do that, then the CTK uh, can run. Now let's quickly look at the reference implementation. The reference implementation is a little bit more interesting because here we are combining a whole bunch of things like, uh, you know, Zookeeper, Kafka, uh, calf drop, uh, the, RI uh, for the HTTP itself, uh, Mongo, and then the async API bridge, uh, which we talked about. Now, all of these will get fired up uh, the, when we run the, uh, you know, the reference implementation. So let's quickly go here and start our reference implementation. So what this will do is it will pull all the required images and with that, it should get started. So once this is started, we should be able to quickly look at uh, calf drop, for example, to see if Kafka is started correctly or not. I think this is pretty much up. So let's quickly look at this. And sure enough, you will see that we have created six topics already. We anticipate that the commands will be posted on these topics. So we have already created these topics. Let's quickly go back here, uh, you know, we also will be able to see the underlying trouble ticket uh, open API specification itself. Uh, this is the HTTP one. Uh, so we also know that the underlying uh, HTTP reference implementation is up and running. So this is all good. At this point, pretty much we know all of the RI is up and running. Now quickly, let's go to the CTK and run the CTK and see what happens. Uh, so to run the CTK, again, it's a simple Docker command. Uh, so let's just quickly run that. Again, Specmatic is going to get fired up here and it's going to start running these tests and it's going through and posting all these messages quickly. And voila, that's it. Pretty much done. So these tests are now all up and running. Let's quickly look at the report. Uh, so this is the async API CTK report for trouble ticket. And as you can see, there is a create trouble ticket, a list trouble ticket, retrieve trouble ticket, and delete trouble ticket. Here you would be able to expand and look at what is the payload that was sent. And you would also be able to see what was the payload that was received. Uh, 
so when we create uh, a trouble ticket in the response you would see that we would have got a uh, trouble ticket id and then going forward there is a workflow that is maintained uh, and the, so the same trouble ticket is followed through so let's look at when we say list uh, trouble ticket or let's say when we say retrieve trouble ticket is it the same uh, you know id again uh, so yeah as you can see we are in the request here we have sent uh, the same request uh, for retrieve and uh, that would have got back in the response so this is a little bit of a workflow that we have implemented to make sure that uh, you know a trouble ticket is created then it's retrieved and finally deleted so i think that is pretty much the architecture of the ri and ctk and there is a lot more interesting stuff that's going on with the several async api implementations so stay tuned for more